Hello everyone, so today we have the second part of DNA Forensic Fingerprinting Lab and we start with the preparation of uh, 1x TAE buffer so the stock one is 50x and you need to prepare 2 liters of 1x TAE buffer so here uh, in your lab book you will need to calculate and document the volumes then you will be using this 1x TAE buffer uh, for the gel preparation so uh, you will be casting gels uh, uh, with the agarose dissolved in this TAE buffer and also it is going to be used as a running buffer for gel electrophoresis okay so the next what you do you uh, cast the gels first of all of course you weigh one gram of agar or agarose and it is going to give you one percent gel uh, so you you weigh it then you put it in the Erlenmeyer flask and uh, bring to volume of 100 milliliters of course you dissolve it in TAE buffer but the thing is the agarose is not easy to dissolve that's why you are going to heat it and heating is going to be performed in the microwave you could also use the uh, heaters but it takes much more time so for the microwave you're going to use the maximum power and uh, the time uh, is one, 30, uh, 1 minute 30 seconds so in this case every 30 seconds you're going to check your uh, gels and you don't want to boil it you just want to dissolve it okay so every 30 seconds stop the microwave and check the uh, solution uh, when it's totally transparent you can remove it from the microwave and let it cool down on the bench while it's cooling down you can assemble the forms in which you are going to cast the gel then after we obtain about 45 degrees of celsius uh, we can slowly pour the gel or the solution of the gel into the form and you want to avoid the formation of bubbles because if you take the gel so let's say we have three wells here and at some place you will have a bubble when your DNA is applied the current so minus and plus here it will move towards the plus pole and if it encounters the bubble it will uh, kind of try to go around it and of course in this case you will not receive the clear result so let's say that we have two parts one was going straight another one was going through this bubble and in the result you will obtain something like that instead of a good band like this okay so you leave it at room temperature to solidify in the video you will see two types of gels that we are going to use one type is usual and we are going to stain it with fast blast dye uh, the second one is actually fluorescent and fluorescence is given um, by the cyber green fluorophore cyber green uh, so what happens here the cyber green uh, is positively charged and in this case it will move from plus to minus right and whenever it encounters the um, the DNA uh, it will form a distinct band which will be visible under the excitation with UV light so we will be using UV light okay uh, so the next video would be the preparation of your samples for the um, real gel electrophoresis run and first of all you are given the loading die 
and the standard DNA. So it is the digest of hint 3 lambda uh, enzyme. So this will give you the different samples of DNA. So it will look like a ladder, but of course it's not a ladder, it's just different uh, sizes of the uh, DNA cut by this lambda digest. Okay. So the 5x loading die, uh, you will need to add it to your samples, and your samples are 20 microliters. Hint 3 should be also 20 microliters. So you will be calculating this uh, volume of loading die. Of course, you should document it and write it in your lab book. Okay, so here we have everything so after addition of loading die you should spin down these samples using microfuge so that in your tube uh, they really could mix so let's say that this is your sample and this is your loading die if you don't bring them down uh, you won't be able to uh, mix them properly so you spin them everything goes down and in this case of course we have the mixture of your sample and loading die so in the fourth video you will see how to load the gels with the samples and first of all you are going to pour uh, one XTAE running buffer into the gel tray so usually it takes about one liter and this running buffer should cover your uh, your gel and also fill the wells in your gel okay so what you do when you load it first of all you take the sample and everything is spun down next you are going to place the tip of your pipette inside this solution and pipe it up and down so that you mix it well again okay so after that, you're going to take 20 to 25 microliters and place them in the, um, in the well. So let's say this is a well of your gel, okay? So here should be the level of your running buffer. And you should place a tip of the pipette inside the well. If you are putting it above it uh, the the part of it will just float away so don't do that try to really dip it in the well and then slowly release it you push on the button on your uh, on your pipette uh, which creates the pressure so the mm, the samples will be released inside the well okay do not release this button before you remove the whole pipette, uh, pipette tip from the well. Otherwise you will suck up the sample back and also you will create the vortex here which will lead to the uh, floating of your samples again. Also why you would need to do it slowly because if you make it with a huge pressure the sample will counter hit the bottom of the well and float away okay another word for the loading die so why do we use the loading die uh, in the video i said that we really need to bind the dna to glycerol and of course if we don't use the loading die the dna will easily float away here okay so be careful and use all of these tips of course you can use your second hand as a block so that this tip will not be shaking and of course it, it creates more precise conditions for your experiment after you loaded all the wells you will need to close the lid and of course you have this tray here uh, with two electrodes one will be red the second will be uh, black Black is usually for negative and red for positive. You 
should connect them color to color so red to red and black to black on the video you will see the four uh, columns of the connections or connectors and you will need to use these columns okay because they are related to the same output if you plugged red to uh, to this connector you should plug the black to the same column connector of the black so this is the right way to connect if you want to use red here and black here, it won't work and you will see the error message on your screen. Of course, the wells of your gels should be closer to the black, uh, black pole. Why? Because the DNA is negatively charged and it will move towards the positive, positive electrode. If you connect black to red and red to black, you will have positive here and negative um, below. In this case, from your well, so let's say this is your gel. And here is the loaded well. Of course, the DNA will easily go through this part and you will lose the experiment. So be careful with the connections. Black, which is negative, is on the top of the gel tray and you connect it to the negative connector okay so after you connected everything you should set up the power supply and we're using 120 uh, volts it is the constant voltage also you could increase it to 130 but not more usually uh, you could also decrease it to 100 but in this case of course it takes much more time than 120 voltage after that you're going to wait until your bands travel on your gel about two-thirds of its length. If we uh, wait more, we are in risk of losing some uh, smaller DNA, uh, DNA fragments. So usually two-thirds or even half of the length of the gel. In the next video you will see how to dilute the fast blast and we are going to use 5x working solution. So for this staining I am preparing 500 uh, milliliters and it is our final volume. This is our final concentration and the stock concentration is 500x. Now you need to calculate how much of fast blast stock you need to dissolve in how much of water. Of course you document it in your uh, lab book. So you collect the gels from the tray and rinse them in uh, distilled water. And after that you can pour the fast blast working solution and you should cover your gels with the fast blast dye otherwise they will uh, easily dry out and you will not be able to uh, take a picture of these uh, gels you usually put it on the agitator or the shaker it is also called shaker and leave it overnight uh, after you put it on this shaker you should set the appropriate speed because if it's too much the fast blast will be spilled uh, from your uh, gel hold holders and they will dry out so be careful with the speed of the shaking okay so the results will be looking like this so this is the fast blast dye and this is cyber green cyber green is the fluorescent uh, dye which could be easily imaged uh, after excitation with the UV light so you apply UV here and they start grow, uh, glowing okay so you have hint 3 DNA standard then you have crime scene suspects 1 2 3 and 4 uh, in your results 
you should write how much the fragments traveled from the wells and you could do that by knowing the distance from this point to this point so usually our gels they are 8 centimeters so if you know these uh, widths here you can easily calculate the distance from here to here and here okay so this is also mm, this is also left for you to calculate so calculate the distance after you know the width of the gel so it is again 8 centimeters here you can see the image of the fast blast stained gel so what is going on here so the fast blast is positively charged uh, dye and it goes through the gel to the negatively charged uh, DNA it binds to it and that's why we can easily see the bands so sometimes because it also uh, colors the gel uh, we don't see the smallest or faintest um, bands but if you compare them to the mm, cyber green gel you could see that here actually we have one band as well as here and here so sometimes it's easier to do the fast blast of course if you don't have cyber green you could use ethidium bromide but ethidium bromide is toxic so you should be very careful uh, by using it and fast blast is generally uh, accepted to be used in the educational labs okay so i will post these pictures and you will be able to calculate them um, I mean the distances even in the um, image editors so there is a special uh, tool called ruler and with ruler you can easily calculate the pixels and while knowing the standard widths which is 8 centimeters you could easily calculate the distances in the image editors Okay, thank you all for listening. Goodbye.